Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and in this Cinema 4D video tutorial, I want to talk about the um, viewport, uh, viewport enhancements in Cinema 4D R19. So let's get to it. Um, I've got a scene where I've got a head that I got out of the content browser, and I just cloned some shapes around on a plane. Um, pretty simple stuff, really. And um, we're just going to look at some of the enhancements in the viewport. So first of all, I'm going to turn off this grid. It's a bit unseemly. And I'm going to create a material. Okay, so I'm just going to double click in my material editor. Um, and I'm going to turn off the color because I don't need that. I'm going to get rid of the default specular and I'm going to add a Beckman. And for this, uh, I think that's fine as it is actually. And I'm going to apply this material to my shapes and I'm also going to apply them to my plane surface and I'm going to apply them to my subdivision surface. Now as you can see that um, our objects here are reflecting uh, the scene um, and as you can see we've got like a we've got some trees in the background there and a sky and that's determined by a default um, sky map basically. So anything reflective will reflect this. Now we can actually replace this with something of our own. So if I actually, um, if I create another material, I'm just going to turn off color and reflectance and I'm just going to lob it in the luminance channel, I think. Um, so let's go find something. Let's go to content browser and I'm going to go to presets, go to the, my little search bar and put HDR in there. And we've got all these. I'm just going to up the thumbnail size a little bit. There we go. And uh, I think, yeah, this concrete blocks one will do. So if I drag that into my, I think that's in my color channel actually. So let me just copy that and actually whack it in the luminance, the place I want it to be. There we go. I think it works in the color as well, to be honest. But uh, now I've got material for a sky object. So. If I create a sky, you'll see that it um, automatically overrides the default uh, environment. And as you can see, it's just reflecting back blue. But if I apply my material to the sky now, you can see that uh, the reflections now switch over to this HDR. And in fact, I'm just going to um, go to my material, go to editor and texture preview size, because you can see it's a little bit blocky in the background there. Obviously at render time, it will look absolutely fine. So if I render now, you can see that it actually comes through fine. But um, just for the, in the viewport, I'm going to crank that up to 4K. So it looks a bit nicer. So you can see that everything's reflecting back. And this is something that could be done in um, Cinema 4D R18. But in R19, we have the uh, added benefit of screen space reflection. So let's, uh, let's go have a look at that. First of all, we have to enable it. So if we go down to options and then we've got reflections already on and there's nothing else here about screen space reflection. So you're probably thinking, well, where the hell are they? And that is because you have to go to options, configure, and then we've got this uh, enhanced open GL tab here. So if we go to this, we've got our reflections here, but we can twirl this down. And um, we've got this little checkbox here called screen space local reflect, uh, reflections. So if you check that on, we can now see that we're actually reflecting our objects in the scene. Now, <clears throat> you'll notice that there's some what looks like artifacting underneath here, whereas we're not getting it on uh, something like this cube. And that's because of the nature of uh, screen space reflections. Now, because it's based on the screen, uh, hence the name screen space local reflections, uh, it's based on what you can see in the screen. So in this screen, we can see this entire side of the cube, and that is what's reflected here. But in the case of our head here, um, it's not actually making contact with the ground. So if I just move this down slightly, uh, oh, wrong one. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, it's because that's on, lovely. If I just move this down, so it's intersecting with the floor, that problem has now gone away. Um, and it's because 
uh, because it's screen space, it's tr- it's saying, look, I can see this portion of the the bust, the head here. So that's what I'm going to reflect. But if you see here, um, it should be reflecting what's underneath this. But it can't do that because it's not on screen. And that is the reason that you'll get that. But it's a good approximation of um, local, uh, screen space local refle- reflections. And um, obviously, this isn't very subtle because we've got a hyper um, hyper reflective material. I mean, it's basically a mirror. So let's uh, let's make some materials that are a little bit more complementary to what we've got here in the scene. So uh, I'm going to create a new material, and I'm just going to color it. You guessed it, red. Um, I'm going to go to the reflectance and remove the red. Uh, sorry, the specular, and I'm going to add a Beckman. Beckman or GGX will be fine. And I'm also going to add a layer for now. So let's make this a dielectric, like some kind of a plastic. And uh, I'll leave it at that for now. Let's whack that on the head. So now we've got this. It's a little bit more subtle. Uh, we can do uh, the same thing for our floor. So I'm going to copy this. And um, I'm going to give this, I don't know. Let's make this a darker darker color let's make it like a midnight blue or something okay so we've got a nice dark color there let's get that on our floor and again you can still see that we've got some slight artifact in there but um maybe actually if we increase the uh the blueness a little bit and just lighten it up there we go something like that maybe it's like the digital meat logo now okay so that's all good and then we'll copy that again and we'll just give these uh we won't faff around for too long. Let's give these a nice orange color. Nice and vibrant. Okay, so we can crank that on our shapes. That is an awful color palette, but um, you can see what I'm getting at there. We're getting nice reflections in the floor, and it just gives us a little uh, preview of those reflections. So that's lovely. Also, uh, something to note about reflections as well. If we create a... Uh, if we go up to lights and we select a PBR light, now I'm not going to go too much into detail about the PBR light because I am going to do a um, I am going to do a tutorial about the PBR workflow within Cinema 4D R19 in general. So not to worry about that. But just for this tutorial, the thing that you should know is PBR lights um, in Cinema 4D R19 reflect. So there we go. So you can see that we've got a reflection of that PBR light in the uh, scene there, which is lovely. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of that so we've got our view back again. Obviously, you can uh, add to the realism in this by adding a uh, um, screen space and amb- ambient occlusion. So it just darkens up along the bottom here. And we can even tweak that as well. So if we go back to um, options, configure, and go back to uh, op- enhanced OpenGL. Uh, something else that uh, I failed to mention, actually, for our reflections, we've got this geometry thickness here, which actually can actually help remedy some of that problem with the um, uh, you know missing geometry in the reflection by, I think it basically copies the edge and then sort of forces it up. So it meets it. So we've got something like this um, and the ray distance as well. So you'll notice that, oh, excuse me. I forgot that this doesn't undo. There we go. So if you look in the reflection, we can only see so far. So if I just make this darker for a moment, like this, you can see that, you know, the head starts to drift off here. And um, if we go back to this and increase our ray distance, it'll actually draw it further. So you can see more of the head in there. Uh, I personally think the default setting's fine. If you're just wanting a preview renders, it will it will do the job uh, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so um, yeah, like, like I was saying, SSAO. Again, this was actually in R18. Um, but you can, you know, increase the radius so there's more of it. You can uh, increase the samples so it's a little bit more cleaner. And you can uh, increase the depth or the power 
you know, to make it darker or whatever. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that at you know, maybe two. I'll leave it at two for now. Okay, so it all adds to the realism um, or of the scene, really. Okay, on to the next thing, which is um, the depth of field. And this one's absolutely brilliant as well. We can now have depth of field live in the uh, Cinema 4D viewport, which is great because when you're animating or setting up and you're trying to do a depth of field, um, maybe like a camera move, or you actually want to animate the depth of field or a focal point itself, uh, it's no longer trial and error. So you don't have to render and go, oh, that's quite not quite right, and then go back again. Obviously, the depth of field that you get in the viewport and the depth of field that you get in the final render are going to be slightly different because one, uh, you know, the, the one in the render is based on physical properties of the physical camera so you know of the lens and all that kind of stuff whereas the one in the viewport is um a post effect basically but so let's get into it options and we've got this depth of field we can check that on and you're probably thinking okay well nothing's happening and that's because to actually get it working you're going to need to have a camera so let's create a camera and now we've got that camera let's go into it and just so we ain't got these borders on the side, I'm going to change our render settings to uh, a 16 by 9, something like that. There we go. Um, so we're in our camera now. And we can, you know, set up a nice wide shot if we wanted to. We've got a wide angle lens, something like this. And uh, as you'll know, when you're actually making depth of field for your final render it'll be the f-stop that dictates what that depth of field is and the lower it is the more pronounced the depth of field effect is so i'm going to choose a focal object and so i'm going to click on this little picker and i'm going to choose our guy's head and then i'm going to start decreasing my f-stop and not a lot seems to be happening so 0 0.1 maybe ah there we go we've, we've getting something now well that's an extremely low f-stop there and it's probably to do with my scene scale and the size of my objects but um so now you can see that we've got we've got a lot of blur going on there so let's go back to our object um and we've got this focus object so i can i can actually choose so i'm going to pick this ball so you can see that that's now more in focus where the head is more blurred out. In fact, there's probably a bit, a little bit of overkill that. There we go. So now we can see the the ball is perfectly in focus, whereas everything else is slowly blurring out. And if I go back to the head, the opposite will be true. We've got some blurring here. These are pretty in focus because they're on the same kind of focal plane as the head itself. Um, so you can see how that you could get some really, really quite nice effects with this. Um, Again, if we add something like this in the foreground and we picked, you know, the chin of our guy, this is all in, this is all out. And, uh, you know, I think that's absolutely fantastic. And we're starting to get some Bokai um, uh, effects here where the uh, um, specular is starting to, um, you know, be distorted. So that's all fantastic. Very good. Very, very good. All running in the viewport, all in real time. It's absolutely great. Uh, another thing that I should mention, actually, about this uh, uh, this picker, you know, you can pick an object to be in focus, but you see here it says focus object, so you can actually put an object in there, which is what essentially this picker is doing. When I press this and pick this sphere, it actually populates this with sphere 5. But something else you can do, if I just clear that... Um, I could, if I go up to create and go to object and create a null, which is for all intents and purposes, uh, purposes a empty object, I can actually put that in that field. So let's go back to our camera and drag my null into it. And now this null actually dictates where the focal plane is. So now I can actually move it and this will update on the fly. So if I, uh, let's just rotate this towards me like this and maybe down a bit so I can actually grab the handle. And now I can actually animate where our distortion takes place, or our focal point is, rather, um, by moving this object. And again, it's all it's all happening in real time. So absolutely brilliant, that. 
Uh, just one more thing that I should probably mention that uh, once you've got your scene set up however you want it, uh, instead of having to ray this out, uh, render this out in either the physical or the standard renderer, all of this stuff can be carried across to the hardware renderer. So if I go here and go to uh, hardware, OpenGL, um, you know, you could choose your size and all of that stuff as normal when we can go to save. Yeah, that's great. Um, but if we go to the hardware OpenGL, we can click on enhanced OpenGL and we can say, you know, we want uh, shadows and whatever we want. So whatever we've got in the scene, we've got a bit of SAO. Uh, we've got some reflections. We've got depth of field. Um, we've got anti-aliasing, which is, uh, you know, I'm just going to put on four so it matches our screen. And this uh, super sampling brute force, basically, um, it sometimes does, you know, a better job than anti-aliasing. It's actually to do with the image, I think. But, um, you know, we can put that on three by three or or whatever we want. So let's uh, let's just give that a quick render. So it's just preparing. And you can see how incredibly quick that was. Um, and it matches our our image there so you know if the quality of this is good enough you can see how that would be great for preview renders for clients or something like that or you know i mean it, it looks great you could probably you know render out a finished finished piece so yeah that's just a few of the things that i wanted to go over for the uh, viewport enhancements in cinema 4d r19 uh, as always check out the website digitalmeet.com UK. Uh, you can follow me on social media. There'll be links to that in the description. And if you want to get extra content on my Patreon page, there'll be a link for that on screen at the end of the tutorial. Okay, guys, cheers for listening. Bye.